goodbye in Canada. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Welcome, Encounter Family to Community Groups. It's me and Courtney tonight. My name's Kayla. This is Courtney. And uh, yeah, we're going to go through um, the first part of chapter two in Revelation, where it talks about the church in Ephesus. But I'm going to bring it over to Courtney so she can pray for us and get us started. Lord, we invite you into this teaching, God. Let every word we say not be words from us, God, but be directly from your throne room. God, let us have revelation on this teaching and learn something new from it. In your name we pray. Amen. So Kayla kind of went over it a little bit, but we are speaking on the Church of Ephesus today. Um, It's often referred to as the church that forgot their first love. I'm going to try to stop swaying. Um, So... It is in Revelation 2, 1 through 7, so I'm going to go ahead and read that. Um, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false you have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary yet I hold this against you you have forsaken the love you had at first consider how far you have fallen repent and do the things you did at first if you do not repent I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the (laughs) Nicolaitans. We practiced before, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. All right. Okay, so Ephesus was the capital of Asia Minor. We have a little map. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the Bible here, but it's right there. Okay. You can zoom in later if you need to see it. Um, And so basically, I encourage you to go back and read the entire book of Ephesians, um, a letter that was written to the church in Ephesians. That was actually written 40 years approximately before this portion of Revelation was written. Okay, so if you read Ephesians and if you look back at this historical context, you can see that um, the church in Ephesus was doing amazing, amazing work. Um, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people. You have tested those who claim to be apostles and are not um, and found them f- and uh, have found them false. You have persevered and endured hardships for my name, and you have not grown weary. Um, even down below, talking about you hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. So not you hate the Nicolaitans, but hate the practices of them. And so at that time, there was a lot of sexual immorality. And in Ephesus, in that area, um, there was a lot of idolatry as well. And so worshiping false idols and all of that. And so... (laughs) In this, in this scripture, when they're talking about you have um, forsaken the love you had at first, 40 years, okay, since, since the church of Ephesus was kind of birthed, right? 40 years later, that's a lot of generations that have passed, um, a couple of them. And so if you think about it, um, you have forgotten your first love well yeah. Um, now, w- in this context, they're putting a lot of work in. They're doing good deeds and all of that. And what's challenging about that is that it's they've forgotten the love of Christ, that, of the whole reason that they started doing the work, the good work that they were doing in the first place. It, all of a sudden, it became about deeds and doing the work for the work or for the people instead of doing the work because of their love for God. And so they lost touch with that after generations have gone by. And so this is like an encouragement of, hey, repent. You, for, you have forsaken your first love. Repent. And I think that our context today 
we get so busy, especially in ministry. I'm going to just talk about myself for a second. Um, we get busy with worship. And then for me, for me, I get busy with worship and with um, uh, trying to take care of kids. <laughs> and then also with externship and also trying to learn cameras and all of that. And the, the work that, that we do as a church and also for me, um, the work that I'm doing too, it's amazing and it's awesome and it's fun and it's it's work for the people but it shouldn't be about that first it's about what what is my first love what is the entire reason that I started doing all of this so not doing the deeds for deeds itself because without the love for God first then it's all for naught so that's good um it really makes me think of the story of Mary and Martha and I know that if you've been following around Following Pastor Brent and Josh, you've probably heard this preached a lot, but it's really good, so I'm going to say it again. So in Mary and Martha, we see Jesus at their house. I'm just going to kind of summarize it. And Martha, this is how I imagine it, Martha, like, running around, rushing around, trying to get things done, you know, like, maybe prep dinner and getting the house clean, getting everything ready for Jesus. And we see Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, right? And Mary gets like I feel like would get like irritated and seeing Mary just sitting there doing nothing when she's stressing out trying to get things done right and so she looks at Jesus and is like Jesus like are you are you gonna let her just sit here and he responds with she's chosen the good part which sitting at the feet of Jesus and I feel like we kind of see that in Ephesus they've forgotten the importance of intimacy with Christ and I see that personally in my own life still like I have to, like, if we take it into my house, I have to clean. I have to take care of my baby. I have to um, work on my externship, spend time with Jesus. And, you know, honestly, a lot of the times I focus on all the things that I'm supposed to be doing as tasks, and then I kind of try to squeeze Jesus in there. And that's not how it should be. And I feel like that's kind of how Ephesus, like, what they were doing, they 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 were doing everything they were doing was good. Everything I do in my house is good. It needs to get done or it'll get crazy, right? But Jesus is more important than all of that. So, you know, and I kind of just want to, like, like, where are you at in that? Are you involved in, like, leadership and ministry? Are you coming to church and, and putting on a good face because and just coming to church on Sundays because that's what you need to do? Or are you taking that home with you and you're spending time with Jesus in your own time and being intimate with him, sitting at the feet of Jesus. We're not saying stop doing good works. <laughs> We're not saying that. Um, I think uh, what, what's important to remember w w specifically with this part in Revelation is um, what are your motives behind the work in ministry that you're doing? Is your motives just for the work itself? Is your motives um, just is your motives, are your motives <laughs> just for, uh, for I don't know, um, public recognition? Are your works for approval in your community? Or are your works the mo motivated by your love for Christ saying, you know what, um, the Lord has done so much for me and this is an overflow uh, of all of that. Um, so, it can be challenging if you've been in church for a long time to get so habituated to to doing those works, coming early, showing up, putting the work in and all of that. Also, what are your motives for that? Don't forget your first love. Don't forget the entire reason that you're here in the first place, the entire reason you're a Christian. Like, what did Jesus do <laughs> in the very beginning to bring you close to him? We cannot forget that because then our motives will be thwarted. So, do you have anything else to say? Yeah, one thing. So, when I was thinking about this, like I was, I texted Kayla earlier, was that today or yesterday, about how it, it's kind of sad to me that Ephesus is referred to as a church that forgot their first love when they were doing all of these things, like great things for Christ, you know? But that's what they're remembered for. And, you know, it made me think of my life. I'm like, do I want to be remembered as you know, just being like a good mom or a good wife. I mean, those are great things to be known for, but truly I want to be known as a lover of Christ and someone that, who put Jesus first. So. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. So next, we want you to kind of think about this stuff because we were just really super vulnerable with um, 
all of you. So anyway, now you get to be vulnerable with each other. So we have three questions for you. Number one, what made you first fall in love with Jesus? Number two, what gets in the way of intimacy with Christ? And number three, how can you remember to put him first? So I'm going to pray us out. Lord, thank you so much for your revelation to us um, to remember to not forsake our first love, but to come to you at the feet of Jesus, asking for, for your, your guidance and uh, direction. May you realign our motives, not out of um, a desire to please anyone, but rather uh, for our motives in our works to be rooted in the fact that you loved us first. And that means we get to go love and do good works. Um, and so, Lord, just realign us with your heart and who you are. You're so good. I pray that um, tonight as people go over um, your word and these questions that uh, a deeper relationships will form and some clarity and insight and wisdom will um, spring forth from these conversations, Lord. Um, and I pray that you will move all across not only um, our encounter family, but this entire city and extending out simply because we are choosing to come together and to uh, put you first and remember you. And may, us, may we cling on to that. You are so good, God. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen.